What if after you were buried, they unearthed the entire cemetery? They removed every body but yours. Are you truly resting in peace? I'm hiking the trail to Cole Cemetery in Chesterfield, Massachusetts. This one is deep in the woods down a road that hasn't seen much travel in a few hundred years. I actually have to duck here for a second. I'll turn the camera around. As you can see, there are stone hedgerows on either side. So this was a road probably a couple centuries ago. This must be it. Now this is a spooky cemetery. I'm a good half mile into the woods, in the middle of nowhere. And here's this old cast iron picket fence. There seems to be only one gravestone here. Let's see if I can find any markings on it. Lonely Laura Cole Ellis. Her maiden name confirms what I suspected. This was a family cemetery established by Laura's grandfather, Patriarch Consider Cole. Consider was born in a village near Boston in 1760 and was only 14 years old when he responded to the battles of Lexington and Concord as one of the Minutemen on April 19th. He even participated in the first 11 days of the Siege of Boston and enlisted on and off throughout the rest of the war despite being only a teenager. After the war, Consider settled here in Chesterfield, fathered 13 children, and created a successful blacksmithing business for himself. The Cole Family Cemetery lay here undisturbed for over 100 years, until 1932 when the state appropriated the land as a watershed for a new dam project. The state ordered all the graves exhumed and removed, yet clearly Laura's was left here. One theory is she died of consumption and workers were afraid to touch the body. Another theory is no descendants of Laura could be contacted in order to get authority to remove her body. But solid evidence of what happened here is nowhere to be found, and what remains has got to be the loneliest grave I've ever encountered. I've been to graveyards that are deep in the woods like this before. They're normally private lots where it's just like one or two families. This is the first one I've encountered where it's just a single tombstone. Whoever that Ebenezer fellow was, he must have really loved his wife. Right now, I just want to get back to my car because I feel like I'm on someone's private property. There's just no real place to park. And what I want to do from here is go to a nearby gorge called Chesterfield Gorge. It's actually the deepest ravine in Massachusetts. They call it the Grand Canyon of Massachusetts. I think that's a little generous. Maybe 80 or 90 feet deep. But yeah, it's just a five minute drive from here. Should be a, a really good day to hike it and explore it. I'm here at the Chesterfield Gorge in Chesterfield, Massachusetts. It's a really dramatic canyon as far as Massachusetts places go. I've been here several times. I would never kayak through it or anything like that. It's way too rapid. And right over here is more about the Westfield River branch that this is a system of. Um, as you can see, we are right here at the Chesterfield Gorge. This branch actually starts in a little town called Peru, which is where I am from, right at the top there. So there's the river bend, the Westfield River, where it starts coming up from, um, I think this stretch is from Windsor. It goes around this bend right here. Here's the ruins of the original post road. And then right off to the side, you see this dramatic gorge. I'm gonna zoom in here. I climbed down to where the where the river bends at the mouth of the gorge. I would really love to ford it, get to the other side of that river, but it's just too rapid right now. And I know underneath that water is all boulders and you will easily break your legs. 
not like walk on sand or gravel or anything like that. At the mouth of the gorge, you'll notice the ruins of the original road that ran from Boston to Albany during colonial times. After the Battle of Saratoga, all the captured British soldiers were marched over this very road to their internment camp in Boston. <sighs> I've been wanting to get the perfect shot of this gorge for years, just the right lighting, the right weather conditions, the right angle the right foliage, the right foreground, and I can never seem to match it all up. I thought I could maybe do something with these white flowers that are down there. They really stood out as a foreground, but they're kind of blocked by that maple tree, and the light is just kind of too harsh right now. The polarizer just wasn't cutting it, and it just wasn't working. I don't know. I feel like there needs to be more photogenic justice of this gorge done because it's a really beautiful place. From the parking lot of the gorge to the start of the East Branch Trail which walks all the way down to a major dam about 12 miles down the road. I have walked it all the way. It obviously takes all day but it's a beautiful walk. I'm going to walk a short stretch just so we can see how beautiful this river is, especially in the spring when the water is flowing and the temperature is nice. Let's go have a look. So I hiked down here to the bottom, well I guess the outflow I should say of the gorge. That's where the gorge starts up there. Let's see if I can, no I can't zoom in on this camera. That hill at the top is called Pyramid Peak. It's a very sharp cute little mountain. I have actually bushwhack hiked at the top of it. You can probably see views this time of year in April, but for the most part it's forested. This is a popular fishing area right down here. I see people fishing all the time. And you can see behind me where the stream, I should say the river, continues. It goes around another bend there, going off that, that, that way. I'm trying to, all right, yeah. You get the idea. A beautiful place to spend the day, for sure. The Chesterfield Gorge. There it is. After spending the day at the gorge, I had just enough time to drive to a favorite spot of mine on Peru Road in Windsor. From there, I could catch a sunset over Mount Greylock through my telephoto lens. The drive got me thinking about Laura's grave and why the explanations to her lonely situation made no sense. If the town was ordered by the state to remove the bodies, why would they leave her gravestone as evidence of their non-compliance? And how could no descendants of Laura be found when everyone in the plot was from the same family? My theory is that Laura was the only person ever buried there. It would explain why no town records of a supposed disinterment exist. She died of consumption and the family buried her in an isolated lot in the woods on private property. It would also explain why Laura's grave is the exact center point of that cemetery. Laura died a slow and horrible death at a young age, but she rests in peace at the cemetery meant solely for her. Just as I came to that conclusion, the light over Mount Greylock turned a brilliant shade of pink.